Today I'm going to teach you how to find starfish next time you go to the beach. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to a rocky intertidal zone. Now an intertidal zone is an area on the beach that is covered with water during high tide and exposed during low tide. So normally during high tide all of these rocks are underwater. And you can tell they're normally underwater because there are barnacles all over them. These are sea animals that live under the ocean. So once you found yourself some barnacly rocks, just go up to the rocks and look around the base of them. Here we go. Starfish are generally safe to touch as long as you do it lightly. But what's most important is rinsing your hands in seawater before you touch a different starfish. This is because starfish can have a disease called starfish wasting syndrome. And if you touch a starfish that has it and then touch another starfish that doesn't, you could spread that disease and the healthy starfish could die. Today, I'm going to show you how to find a green sea anemone next time you go to the beach. The first thing you're going to want to do is find a tide pool. Now, a tide pool is usually an area surrounded by rocks that traps ocean water during low tide. When you're looking around in the tide pools, just look near the bottoms of the rocks and you can see there's two sea anemones right here. And here's a couple things to remember when you find a sea anemone. They're generally safe to touch. Just do so lightly on the outside of them or on the tentacles. And remember that if you touch the tentacles, it sometimes feels like they're not going to let you go, like they're holding on to you. That's okay. Don't panic. Just slowly pull away until they let go. Also, don't touch the little center area right there because that area is their mouth and their, um, you know. Aren't these guys just super cool? This is how to find sand piggies next time you go to the beach. All right, the first thing you do is walk up to the water line right where the water's coming up. Okay, next what you're gonna wanna do is just dig down in the sand. It might take one or two little scoops here. Oh, there we go, got one. Let me rinse him off a bit. There he is. Look at them, they're so cute. And once you're done looking at them, you just put them right back down in the water and they go right down. Today, I'm going to show you how to find little shore crabs next time you go to the beach. This is probably going to be the easiest sea animal to find. All you have to do is go to an intertidal zone. Once you've properly located an intertidal area, you find a rock that is pretty small, easy enough to flip over. And once you flip it over, you should see little shore crabs. Hey buddy, I'm not gonna hurt you. Don't fight me. Today I'm gonna teach you how to tell a male crab apart from a female crab. As you can see here, this one has a little triangle on the bottom of it and it's a long, thin triangle. That means it's a male. Let's take a look at what a female looks like. All right, and here we have a female and as you can see, the little triangle on the bottom is very wide. It's not even a triangle at this point. This is the area of the female crab where they carry the eggs. Now you guys are crab experts and you can tell male crabs from female crabs. 